brand new 7 series ready for its debut in India. We have the review. TVS surprises by bringing in a bike that can run on ethanol. And the top 5 electric cars coming soon to India. Brand new episode of CNB. Thank you for joining us. I'm Siddharth Vinayak Parkankar. You've got a little bit of a preview of what's coming up, so no suspense, and which is why we will get to that new BMW 7 Series first up. Now, I say new, but of course, it is the update on the current generation car, but it's got a whole lot that's uh, enough to possibly excite even the most discerning buyer, and there's a particular target, a particular intent behind all of this, and we will tell you all of that in our review. The new BMW 7 Series is all set to storm in. Now this is still the 6th generation car, but with a lot that has changed on it. Now it's such a huge facelift that I'm almost reluctant to call it that. I'm not the only one. Even within the company there are many who are saying that look, this kind of goes beyond being an LCI as BMW calls it. So, we are still going to call it a facelift because it has come in the middle of the generation cycle. So, sticking to that, the point that has to be taken into account, why? Why did such a massive change have to be carried out in terms of the styling especially? Well, here's the thing. A large part of the feedback on the current generation car has come from people saying that, look, the car doesn't look stately enough. It doesn't look as opulent or imposing as something like this should, especially when you compare to the competition. And so, where is most of that feedback coming from? China, because more than 40% of the 7 Series family sells in China. Yes, so it's no surprise that Chinese buyers therefore had a lot to uh, perhaps contribute in a sense to what's finally happened when it comes to the actual changes, the actual facelift. So yes, the idea was to get the car into a higher echelon and also get its sales moving. One look at it and you certainly will know right away that this is a new car for sure. Updated laser lights and the overall housing has gotten a lot slimmer. That's part of that intentional new design language that you're seeing from BMW. I will get to the elephant in the room, the rather big one, in just a bit. But uh, let me get through some of the other stuff. The hood has been completely redesigned to give the car a more upright, taller, straighter, vertical kind of a look. And it's uh, also what you see in the bumper. A lot more straighter, more upright, standing kind of a proportion. You see it in the fenders, you see it at the rear and the rear bumper as well as the rear fenders too. And the logo. So when they did all this, they realized that the car's existing logo was looking, well, it kind of disappeared. And so uh, they had to make that about 12 millimeters larger in diameter as well. So largest BMW logo ever. Speaking of which, let's come to that thing that everybody wants to talk about when it comes to this car, the grill. You think it's bigger? Yeah, well, yes, it's bigger. It's a whole lot bigger. And speaking of the largest in BMW's history, yes, this grill is the largest too. Now, the X7 is the, is the most upright, the tallest grill that they've ever done for the kidney grills but this is the widest and so in terms of surface area they say is the biggest that they've ever done why well we already talked about how the car needed to look a little more opulent and all of that so i won't go there but you're wondering how much bigger it is right that's the thing you want to really know you won't be able to guess this one 47 percent bigger than the one on the outgoing car believe it or not down, 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 down. 47% bigger. Wow, that is almost hard to believe, right? I have to say that when I saw the early pictures of this facelift, I was quite mortified by that grill. Having spent some time with the car, I have surprised myself. It has not just grown on me, quite literally, I actually kind of like it now. 
The window glass is now 5.1 millimeters thicker than before and there's also extra insulation inside the rear wheel arches and the fact that the cabin is quieter is true. At the back, the car looks quite handsome. The full stretch LED light strip stays on with the front daytime running lights. The new look tail lights have a rather sculpted look and are attractively designed. The powerful diesel is the 750D with 400 horses and then there's the 320 horsepower 740D model. And while the 730D uses the same inline 6 engine as those two, it is tuned to 260 bhp and has 620 nm of torque. The gearbox is the same across the range. I had the 750 Li X drive with me though I did get my hands on the 745 LE that's the plug-in hybrid variant but only briefly. But while India is getting the 730 LD we won't get the V8 model instead we'll have the 740 Li and both cars will be long wheelbase and assembled at BMW's plant in Chennai. In addition to them, there'll also be a range-topping imported variant, the M760 Li X-Drive. Yup, all-wheel drive and all the bells and whistles. And loads of power, courtesy a monster V12. Back to the car I was driving though. The 750 Li has the V8 motor with its twin-scroll turbos placed within the engine's V. Power is increased now at 520 bhp and you get a lot of torque, 750 nm, starting at just 1500 rpm. Despite being a long wheelbase, the car will still go. I mean, you put it into sport mode especially, it also sounds really nice. And uh, yeah, the response, the overall handling, the acceleration, all of it is pretty instant. And it remains at its core a driver's car, which is such a relief unlike some of its rivals, which are kind of large and floaty. The drive dynamics are what will get you straight away. The car is just as agile and comes across as even a tad more powerful now. It is quick and I suspect can outrun a few glorified sports cars in a straight line. As is the case with most cars and especially luxury offerings these days, the big focus is on technology. And being the company's range topper, the 7 Series is brimming with it too. Flagship sedan for BMW, so no surprise of course that with that massive update, you also get the latest 7th generation iDrive, so um, ID7 as they like to call it, and uh, which is the most updated, the most current, the most plugged in, the most connected, the most intuitive and also uh, the most accessible iDrive interface that we've seen so far. First time we saw it was on the X5, we then got it on the, uh, well the 3 series I guess is where I saw it next, and then more recently on the X7 as well. The whole point here being that uh, that's where the focus is going, right? Everything is changing towards being very much connected and digital. The only thing I find a little bit of a miss, you have wireless phone charging, it's right up here, which is great from a European or an American context, but what about the Indian context? Shouldn't the wireless charging have been back there? Speaking of back there though, the other good update, those standard screens in the back for individual entertainment, thank God they're touch screen now. And that rear seat is ample, comfortable and can be configured as a bench or with individual reclining seats. Optional equipment ranges from massage functions, the touch screen entertainment packages and much much more. And then of course there's also the virtual assistant. Hi BMW, I'm feeling stressed. I have activated the relax program. Hi BMW, end the program. Cancel. Hi BMW. 
BMW N Relax program. The Relax program is already activated. Hi BMW, stopped the Relax program. The Relax program is already activated. Hi BMW, deactivate Relax program. Deactivate Relax Program. Please. The Relax Program is already activated. Ah! <laughs> yeah, I feel really relaxed right about now because uh, <laughs> I'm not frustrated at all. Luckily, you can do it manually. Too much technology, right? But we better get used to talking to our cars to get things done as the speech recognition is only getting better and more all pervasive and also a lot more intuitive. So the new updated 7 series has enough going for it to truly stand tall as BMW's flagship product. It is capable and clever and also looks the part more convincingly now. It's also still a lot more fun to drive than most rivals should owners ever get out of the back and get in the driver's seat. And that for me is what makes it truly special once again. Now the hybrid version drives really nicely too, it's really smooth but it doesn't matter because it's not coming to us unlike the last generation car where we did get the hybrid in very small volumes. Prices of course will be known only next week and uh, it doesn't really matter does it? I mean you're not going to buy that car, I'm not, well some of you might but I'm certainly not going to buy that car but uh, it is now the uh, absolute top notch of everything that BMW is doing, it reflects in that car. Alright, now we move on to TVS. Ethanol, that seems to be the new play from TVS and is it mere tokenism at this point or does that really take us into a new direction? Well, the point is you now have India's first ethanol ready motorcycle. The details. TVS Moto Company has launched this. This is the conventional Apache RTR 204. It looks exactly the same, but there's a slight and very significant difference that it runs on ethanol. It's a step towards green mobility. So, if ethanol was available today, you can put ethanol on this and start riding. And it's been priced at one lakh twenty thousand rupees, and it will be available initially only in Karnataka, Maharashtra, and Uttar Pradesh. Now TVS says it's ready with the bike. It's been exported to Brazil and other international markets where ethanol is available since 2008. But moment the government makes ethanol available in India, you can very well buy one and start riding this to make a green clean statement. Now this one, the engine per se is absolutely the same as the conventional petrol powered TVS RTR 204V. What has changed of course is the plumbing the fuel injector and those are the things that the ECU has been remapped. So the ECU what it does is it will tweak the power, it will tweak the engine according to what kind of ethanol you put. You can put E80 which is essentially 80% ethanol and 20% petrol. It's got the same fuel tank so you can put 80% of ethanol in it, 20% of petrol and you can also put 100% ethanol and it will run absolutely fine. Now. It will be available in a few months as in when ethanol is produced commercially and uh, TVS is hoping the government will soon make ethanol available and well it's the same engine so it sounds the same. And it's got identical power output so there should not be any 
difference in the performance of this ethanol powered TVS Apache RTR 204V. So that's the new TVS ethanol powered Apache 200 priced at 1 lakh 20,000 rupees. Remember, ethanol is not available commercially now, but once it is available, you can very well buy this bike and start riding. And uh, in terms of running costs, uh, we don't know what price it normally costs, but according to TVS, it needs to be priced at around 60 to 65 percent of the cost of petrol. Then you'll break even if it's priced lower and it's a win-win situation for you, the consumer. So that's the new TVS Apache RTR 204V FI powered by Ethanol. Time for us to take a short break here on CNB. We come back with the top five electric cars coming your way. Welcome back. We're now going to talk electric once again and get used to it because you're going to hear more and more and more about anything that plugs in. And we have the top five picks cars that are actually coming to India in the next few months. The financial year of 2019 was sort of a landmark year for EV sales. Over 7.5 lakh units of electric vehicles were sold in India which saw the growth of electric cars triple from 1200 units and FI 2018 to 3600 units in FI 2019. Electric vehicles are here to stay and more are coming this year. Interestingly, it's not the established players but the new ones that are looking to introduce electric cars in India. MG Motor will launch the EZS electric SUV which it revealed earlier this year in April. It will be launched in India by the end of 2019 or early 2020. It will be the second launch from MG after the Hector and it will get over the air technology and will have a range of 300 km on a single charge from its lithium ion battery. The exact specifications for the EZS are yet to be announced but the company has confirmed that it will be assembled in India in order to keep the costs competitive. MG has also tied up with a Finland based company called Fortum to install 50 kilowatt fast charging DC chargers in India. Up next is the Nissan LEAF. Yes, Nissan has confirmed that it will be launching the LEAF in India this year. Fun fact, the LEAF is the highest selling highway capable electric vehicle in the world and we expect it to be priced at about 35 to 40 lakh rupees when it arrives. The fact that it is an import pushes the cost up. The LEAF gets a 40 kilowatt hour battery which can offer a range of up to 400 kilometers on a single charge. Power output stands at 148 brake horsepower and peak torque of 320 newton meters. Charging time of the battery is between 8 and 16 hours depending on power capacity. The car also gets a quick charging feature which can give 80% battery charge in just 40 minutes. Among the luxury car manufacturers, Audi is gearing up to launch the e-tron in India. It will be the first fully electric luxury SUV in the country. We expect it to be priced above 1 crore 50 lakh rupees considering it will be a CBU. On full charge, the e-tron gets a range of 400 km and that's quite good. The e-tron gets two electric motors, one on each axle. The front one makes about 125 kW while the rear motor makes about 140 kW. The combined total power output comes to 265 kW or 355 bhp. The peak torque output is rated at 561 newton meters. In the boost mode, the power output goes up to 300 kilowatts 
of 408 PHP. The top speed of the e-tron is rated at 200 km per hour. Another luxury car maker getting into the act of launching an electric car in India is Jaguar Land Rover. It has confirmed that the I-Pace will come to India by the end of 2020. The I-Pace has the pedigree of a champion already. It won an unprecedented treble at the 2019 World Car Awards. It won the World Car of the Year Award along with the World Car Design Award and the Green Car Award as well. The I-Pace comes with two synchronous permanent magnet electric motors at the front and the rear axle which have a combined power output of 395 bhp and makes a maximum of 696 Nm of torque. It also features an all-wheel drive system. The 0 to 100 km per hour sprint takes about 4.5 seconds and the performance SUV will have a range of over 480 km. Another car maker getting back into the EV space is Mahindra and it's confirmed that the electric version of the KUV100 will be launched soon, probably later in 2019. The company has already begun testing prototypes in the country. While the exact specifications are confirmed yet, it's expected to get an electric motor which churns out about 50 brake horsepower and 120 Newton meters. The expected range could be up to 100 or 120 km and the battery could be charged fully in about 6 to 7 hours. Of course, all these variables could change once the final production model is launched. Expect the electric KUV100 to be priced around 10 lakh rupees. Well, that's it. That's all we have time for on the program today. And you've been wondering why I have this duster dressed in Caspian blue. This is the new one, the facelift. And I haven't said a word about it till now. Well, that's because, of course, we have it coming up for you. And in fact, you can catch the review very quickly online on both our website, that's carandbike.com, or go to our YouTube channel, that is youtube.com slash carandbike. So, yes, King Shook has a review coming up for you. And uh, there are quite a few updates, but there's also more of the same. That's all I'll leave you with. Thank you for watching, and please wear your seatbelts. I'll see you next week.